Hello students, welcome to EPG Partsala. I am Anup Kumar Kapoor from Department of Anthropology, University of Delhi, Delhi. Today we are going to talk on module 8 change and the relation to sex and ethnicity from the paper Forensic Anthropology. Our learning objectives are the first about age changes, second measurement of age changes, third stages of age changes, then fourth age changes among different sex and finally age estimation methods. Age is the period of being, length of time that a person or a thing has existed. Age is continuous, irreversible and always goes in a high number as time lapsed. As time lapses, age increases. The term age and changes both dependent on each other. Contextually, one gets stress and another remain in sportive mode. For example, first mustache and beards appearing on a body boy's face, so he is entering adulthood. Second, Apparently, lady completes her eighth month of pregnancy, so in ninth month, she is going to deliver a baby. In example number one, changes are stress and age remains in sport of fit. Here, by observing the changes in a boy, his age is going to be estimated. And second example has age of pregnancy and predicting about change would be in ninth month. Change will always follow the age and vice versa. Due to this reason, we can use world age change for both. Age changes is a natural and indistinctive phenomena. It is not possible to escape from age and age change. Age change growth and development are go hand in hand. Growth and development are determined and verified by age change itself. For example, first, it is medically known that by the eighth week of embryo becomes child like appearance by the process of morphogenesis. It means by the eighth week through the rate of growth is slow, yet during this time the differentiation process in the mass too form various regions which later on give rise to different parts like head, leg, arm and so starts. Second, it is generally known that it is a baby is having low birth weight then it is directly associated with incomplete growth of a baby. That means baby born prior to 37 weeks of gestation which is also known as premature baby. In first examples, changes occur into the organism by its age raises, that is lapsed. There must be a definite changes in definite age. Changes always follow the age. So here age determine the changes or growth and development. In second example, if expected changes are not observed in an organism in a particular age, it could lead some problems. So here it verifies the growth and development of the organism. A person himself and observer will experience a change in mainly three ways. Those are as given below. First, increase in length that is stature, head length, nose length, sitting height etc. Then second comes increasing in surface area. For example, circumferences of head, chest, waist, wrist, middle arm circumference, etc. And the third is increase in mass, that is the weight. These are measured by three different types. The first is linear. It means having a form of a line or state which is usually evaluated in terms of increase in length. Second, aerial. It means of or pertaining an area, the areas or spaces enclosed, which refers to growth of surface area. Then third is pondral, pertaining to weight or which means growth in weight or mass.
now to see the stages of age changes now the graph has been given stages of age changes first is the prenatal conception of fetus then postnatal infancy to adulthood and the third is senescence now the first is prenatal conception of fetus they have three major parts the ovum embryo fetus whereas the postnatal that is infancy to childhood start from infancy childhood puberty and maturity life begins at conception where a new organism is created with the mother's ovum fertilized by the father's sperm from that point till that an individual keeps on growing and change such changes are not random but orderly and they generally follow a pattern dolment is a process by which organism grow and change systematically over the entire life period that is from conception till that development and changes are not only growth or addition to human organisms they also involve decay a child loses the milk teeth in the process of development and an old person may show decay in several areas of functioning development involves systematic changes in a direction in all aspects from size and proportion of the body to the ways of thinking living and feeling thus development is the total process of change in which all aspects of a person are interrelated and integrated for example a 13 year old girl undergoes physical and biological changes in her body and such changes are related to her mental social and emotional development also a change growth and development we must also distinguish between growth maturation and development development necessarily involves growth but growth is simply quantitative addition or change as we become older the body size height weight proportion of parts of our body and the appearance of different limbs and part changes in measurable ways development involves growth and other qualitative changes developmental changes also include changes due to maturation maturation is the change which is biological in nature and which is due to our genetic endowment the genes that we inherit contain blueprints for changes in an orderly and predetermined sequence following a sort of biological clock changes like falling of milk teeth growing of hair a child's onset of walking bodily changes during adolescence and ever change as in the way we think and understand are affected by our maturational readiness our biological system follows a predetermined timetable preparing us for developmental changes maturation changes in our body or behavior are primarily due to to the aging process rather than learning or other factors such as illness or injury maturation and our experience in the environment jointly bring about changes in our development human development from conception to that is generally viewed as occurring through eight stages the major developments during each of these stages are described below first prenatal stage the development from conception till birth of a baby constitute the prenatal stage the approximate period of prenatal development is taken to be 9 calendar months or 10 lunar months that is 280 days although babies are not born exactly up to 280 days of conception biologically it takes about 266 days from conception for a fetus to become ready for the birth process actual birth of normal full term baby may take place any time after that prenatal stage is further divided into three phases the first phase the germinal period is a period from conception until implantation conception occurs when a sperm penetrates the wall of a ripened ovum 
forming a zygote. In about 8 to 14 days, the zygote gets firmly attached to the wall of the mother's uterus. This is called implantation, which brings the germinal period to end. The second phase of prenatal development is the period of embryo, which lasts from the beginning of the third week to the end of the eighth week. During this time, all major organs are formed and the heart begins to beat. The third phase is the period of the fetus. It lasts from the third prenatal month until the baby is born. The major organ systems begin to function and the growth of the organism is quite rapid. Postnatal stage growth starts from the time of birth up to adulthood or the time of maturity. Infancy, the period from birth to two years constitute the infancy stage of life. Maternal influence of birth weight and birth length is more important than the genotypes of the child. Immediately after birth, the rate of growth increases. In case of weight, the peak velocity is reached at two months after birth by building up the cytoplasms in the cells of the muscles and also incorporating salt in them and by formation of proteins, the growth at infancy continues. In this process, decrease of water concentration and disappearance of the intercellular contents are observed. The cell becomes larger in size. General clubness and head and trunk of relatively large dimensions are characteristic feature of a child during infancy. The cervical and the lumbar curvatures of the spinal column appearance as the baby begins to strengthen the head and the tight to sit up and stand. On the basis of distance and velocity curves, the pattern of growth during childhood can be obtained. The pattern may be regarded as the standard for a particular population and the growth pattern of the children of that population can be predicted accordingly. Both hereditary and environment play their respective role in physical growth. Therefore, the hereditary growth potential of a child may be influenced by the various environmental factors which include nutrition, state of health, socioeconomic condition of parents, psychological well-being and the like. There are population variations in the pattern of growth. The early childhood is the period of eruption of deciduous or milk teeth. All milk teeth are erupted during this period and permanent detrition also shows its beginning. During this period, the growth is relatively more in width than in height. In middle childhood, permanent teeth, though not at all, erupts. In this period, size of head increases slightly. Linear growth of the body takes place rapidly and the waistline becomes definable. In late childhood, phase of growth stage starts from the pre-pivotal period and continues up to the time of puberty. It is actually occurs around 14 years. Sexual morphological differentiation normally begins during this phase. The rate of growth decreases during childhood. It becomes negligible towards the end of the late childhood phase, but a notable increase in growth velocity known as the adolescent growth spurt is observed, which, however, is associated with the onset of sexual maturation. Adolescence, the adolescence period extends from the time of puberty up to around 20 years. The acceleration of growth at adolescence causes many anatomical changes almost in all parts of the body. Sexual maturation takes place during this period. According to some, this period may be divided into pre or pubertal phases. The pre phase lasts for about two years. During this time, the increase of weight is retarded. Height increases by the lengthening of the legs. The thorax becomes narrow, trunk becomes short, legs and arms become long. During pubertal period, sexual organs are matured. 
the body proportions are changed, scanty sexual characters appear. In girls, the first menstruation marks the beginning of ovarian activity, but in boys, it is difficult to ascertain precisely the time of maturation of the testes. The most obvious secondary sexual characters in girls are the development of breast, appearance of axillary and pubic hairs. In boys, also pubic hair and beard and mustache shows appearance. Adulthood or maturity. The cessation of growth of height is regarded as sign of maturity. Height ceases to grow when the long bones, example tibia, fibula, etc., lose their capacity to increase in length. Usually, males attain the adult height at about 20 years of age and the females at 18 years of age. Another important sign of adulthood is reproductive maturity. During this period, Reproduction maturity begins but not complicated. On an average, adult males are heavier and taller than adult females. Senescence after the prime period of adulthood, senescence starts. The aging pattern shows greater individual variation. The aging time also differs from person to person and society to society because environment plays an important role. During this period, many molecular and cellular changes occur. Organism changes are also there. These changes are measurable and can be described, but these do not exhibit any specific pattern or well-defined sequence. Because of aging, the tissues do not renew and as a result cells show senilial involution, the memory declines, aged persons need more time to learn and to react. The speed of conduction in motor nerves shows a decline. Systolic blood pressure increases. Peripheral resistance and circulation time in the cardiovascular system shows an increase. The range of accommodation of the eyes lens declines. There is a reduction of density of long bones and vertebrae and therefore height and sitting height slows it decreases. Arm span circumference of forearm and that of calf diminishes, vital capacity and muscle tone declines, ethnic differences. Racial groups show differences among them in respect of certain descriptive morphological traits. Krogman in 1955 listed some characteristics of the skull of three major races namely Caucasian, Negroid and Mongolian. He has given description of skull of these divisions comparing the descriptive morphological and metic characteristics of a given skull with those of the groups the skull may be assigned to one group. Now, determination of age on the basis of skeletal remains is not an easy task because of great deal of individual variability at different times have made attempts to ascertain the age of an individual at death taking into account certain characteristics. In case of children, it is comparatively easy to suggest that judging the extent of ossification of bones and eruption of teeth, sometimes it is possible to suggest the approximate age in case of adults as well as with age. Many changes occur in the skeleton, including the skull. So example here, with advancement of age, obliteration of the sutures of the wall of the skull takes place. Of the inner surface of the skull, it may start between 40 and 50. The lower part of the coronal suture is the first to exhibit obliteration Next comes to the posterior part of the central suture to be followed by the lambda suture. In general, the skull becomes lighter and thinner in old age. The loss of teeth is another notable event of old age as a result of which the size of the mandible and that of maxilla shrink. As regards eruption of teeth, very generally, it could be said that the first molar tooth of the permanent set erupts by 7 years of age and by 14 seconds one appears. 
for determining the of sex mostly two parts of the skeleton are thoroughly examined because in these two sex differences are more pronounced the parts are the skull and the pelvis the female pelvis needs certain special features to make necessary provision for parturition and that makes female pelvis distinguishable from male pelvis the sex differences however are not very distinct in young age in the adults the differences are more marked the same is true in case of sex differences in skull it should be kept in mind that in some skulls and also in pelvis the distinguishing features are very well marked making it easy to determine the sex sex differences are observed in other parts of the skeleton the differences are listed below first thorax is slightly differs from the female thorax cervical and lumbar vertebra also exhibit differences some other bones like humerus radius ulna clavicle scapula sternum femur and tibia have seen ascertaining sex teeth show a wide range of morphological variation which help in identification of an individual there may be an extra tooth that is supernumerary tooth an extra cups on a tooth an extra root in tooth absence of a tooth missing root etc shape is another aspect it may be shovel shaped or peck shaped thus there are several aspects of dental characters which may help in identification in the context of personal identification we can recollect the qualities of dermatographic tests and their use in personal identification illiterate person put their left thumb impression instead of signature and this is accepted by all because the ridges of fingers are unchangeable no two persons are exactly alike in dermatographic tests the negroes are being shorter and having coarse feature in face and body among them nose is very broad its root is low and the bridge flat cheek bones are prominent face is marked prognathous chin is retreating lips are markedly everted ear small with little or no lobe the head predominantly long with the protruding occiput and rounded head and solo ridges are small Mongoloid are having some ethnic differences scanty body and facial hair broad flat nose with prominent cheekbones oblique eye with narrow slit like opening and internal apicanthic fold or total mongoloid fold then caucasoids include numerous ethnic groups with diverse racial elements the head form it ranges from dolichocephalic to brachycephalic high nasal bridge Prognathism is usually absent. Cheek bones are generally not prominent. Forehead is comparatively high. Age estimation method. Age estimation as terms themselves suggest that it is calculation of a particular thing or subject's age. It can be done through many ways or methods. Some of them are given below. First is physical examination. Physical examination in case of age determination should include measurements such as body height and weight, body type, body mass index, as well as any visible sign of maturity and the result of general physical examination, and should describe any signs suggesting of a pathological condition which may interfere with maturation rate of the child. there seems to be general agreement among others that the interpretation of results obtained from anthropometric variable is an imprecise factor for the prediction of chronological age some studies have shown that individuals of greater height and weight and those with an athletic body type and above average bmi are among those who in a specific population maturation are makes big the more advanced born age in relation to actual chronological age sign of sexual maturation are examined by evaluating the stage of development of the penis and scrotum pubic hair growth axillary hair growth facial growth and laryngeal prominence in male subjects breast development axillary hair growth and shape of the hip in female subjects the most 
widely used method for the study of scanty sexual characteristics is the staging described by Tanner. The method was devised to estimate the stage of development or physiological change for medical, educational, or sports purposes and identify delayed or advanced sexual maturation when the chronological age of the subject is known. The method uses a five-stage scale to evaluate the status of pubic hair growth and breast development in girls and pubic hair growth and development of penis, scrotum, and testes in boys. Now from this table, we will have the different stages of development. First is breast development stage in girls. It is pre-pubertal, papilla elevation only. The second is breast butt stage, elevation of breast and papilla as a small mound, enlargement of arulia diameter. Third, general enlargement of breast and arulia. Fourth, projection of arulia and papilla as candy mound. Lastly, mature stage adult contour with areola in some contour as breast and only papilla projecting. In the case of pubic hair symphysis, in the case of girls, pre-pubertal, no pubic hair. Second, sparse growth of long, slightly pigmented, downy hair state or only slightly curled chiefly along the labia. Third, considerably darker coarser and more curled with an increase in amount. The hair spreads spatially over the junction of the pubis. Fourth, hair resembles adult type but no spread to the medial surface of the thighs. And lastly, adult in quantity and type spread to medial thighs. Then we take pubic hair symphysis in the case of boys. First, Pre-pubertal, no pubic hair. Then second, sparse growth of long, slightly pigmented, downy hair, straight or slightly curled, chiefly at the base of the penis. Then considerably darker, coarser and more curled with an increase in amount. The hair spreads sparsely over the junction of the pubis. Then hair resembles adult types, but no spread to the medial surface of the thighs. And lastly, adult in quantity and time spread to medial thighs. Then comes lastly, genital development stages in boys. First is pre-pubertal, no change size of the or proportion of testes, scrotum and penis from early childhood. Second, enlargement of scrotum and testes, reddening and change in the structure of the scrotal skin. Third, increase in length and then breadth of the penis, further growth of testes as scrotum. Fourth, enlargement in length and breadth of penis and the development of glands, further growth of testes as scrotum, darkening of the scrotal skin, and the lastly, genitalia adult in size and shape. Axillary hair growth, facial hair growth, and laryngeal prominence development may also be assessed using the four-stage classification proposed by Nezi et al. Of the forensic methods recommended for age determination, assessing age on the basis of physical traits is the least precise. Evaluating sexual maturity has the greatest margin of error and should be used for the age determination only in conjunction with an evaluation of skeletal maturity and tooth development. Multiple pathological conditions and non-pathological idiosyncratic conditions cause a large range of variation in the outset of external changes associated with sexual maturation in different subjects. Therefore, age determination cannot be made on the basis of these examination data alone. Moreover, irrespective of the difficulty in interpreting the results due to inter-observer and intra-observer differences, there are few series analyzing the progression of these parameters with chronological age in different populations, and the few available are mainly focused on developed countries. However, the physical examination is extremely useful for evaluating the potential impact of pathological factors on the maturation status estimating using other methods. The great discrepancy between height, weight, and external signs of maturation 
and the bone and dental age estimated using radiographic methods should guide the examiner on the potential interference of pathological conditions and to a weighted estimation of age. Most diseases, delay development are thus conducive to underestimation of age. Such underestimation of age would not disadvantage the person concerned in the judicial framework. By contrast, overestimating age due to disease that accelerates development should be avoided at all costs. Certain diseases which occur very rarely, in particular endocrine disorders, may affect not only the attainment of height and sexual development but also skeletal development. Endocrine disease that may accelerate skeletal development include precious puberty, endogenital syndrome, and hypothyroidism. Similarly, a general physical examination may show symptoms such as exophalothomosis, virilization of girls, acromegaly, and gigantism, which are indicative of pathological disorders and must also redirect the estimation of age. Another indication of a possible endocrine disorder is discrepancy between skeletal age and dental age as dental development normally remains unaffected by endocrine disorders. Various methods are utilized for determination of age from detection. This may be described in four categories, namely clinical, radiographic, histological, physical, and chemical analysis. First is clinical or visual method, visual observation of the stage of eruption of teeth and evidence of changes due to function such as attrition can give an approximate age of estimation of age. Second, radiographic method, radiography can provide the gross stage of dental development of the dentition. Third, histological method, histological methods require the preparation of the tissue for detailed microscopic examination which can determine more accurately the stage of development of the dentition. This technique is more appropriate for post-mortem situation. It is also significant in estimation of age of early development of dentition. And the fourth and the last is physical and chemical analysis. The physical and chemical analysis of dental heart tissues to determine alterations in iron levels with age have been proposed. While these techniques as yet are not of great value to the forensic odontologist, future developments might provide an objective means of collecting evidence of value in the dental context. Let us summarize this module. Change is the law of nature and age changes is a destructive phenomena. Each and every object or organism in the nature has its own lifespan and duty. Every object or organism gets specialized characteristics as its age increases and it stops at a point after that the level of performance the gradually comes down. Infancy, childhood, adolescence, adulthood, and senses or old age is the best example of age change. Age change will occur mainly in three ways and these are measured in three methods. Increases in length measured by linear method. Second, increase in surface area measured by aerial method and increase in mass which is measured by pedral method. Age change itself creates major differences between sex though in early stage differences are less. But in later stage all gradual changes are observed much like boy gets mustache or beards, wise gets hard auxiliary and pubic hair appear, etc. Whereas a girl experiences menstrual cycle, smoother voice, auxiliary and pubic hairs appear and breast development, etc. The age changes take stages are remains same in all ethnicity, but in the level they acted upon them in different from one ethnic group to another. For example, Kokoshite, Mongolite, and Negroite.
थैंक यू